There you are. We've been waiting for you. You're right on time for another edition of The Morgan Show. I'm Lamont Germany, joined by the junior broadcast journalism major, Gabriel Ortiz. We welcome you to The Morgan Show. Gabe sitting in for Kayla Sweezy. Welcome aboard, Gabriel. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you to everybody on the crew, and thank you, Lamont, for having me. I got a whole lot on the docket today, and I just can't wait to get into it. I spent my weekend, Gabriel, in Washington, D.C., Watching a football game, the Bears were on the road down in D.C. taking on the Howard University Bison in an underwhelming performance, to say the least, for Morgan State. They fell by a final count of 27 to nothing, and the game really wasn't that close. Bears didn't look good on any phase of the game, offense, defense special teams. This is a football team, Gabriel, that has a lot of work to do. They do have a lot of work to do, but... To look on the bright side, they got a lot of conference games coming up back to back to back over their next four games. So if there was ever a time to start to try and turn the season around, these really important games are going to be the best time to do it. Volleyball team also in action this past weekend. They were at home on Friday against Howard, on the road on Sunday against Norfolk State. Both matches in the loss column for Lady Bear Volleyball. They lost three straight to uh, Howard, got swept 3 nothing. Norfolk State, a bit more competitive, but still lost 3-1. to one. The Lady Bears fall to 1-4 and four in MEAC play, and that's another Morgan team, Gabriel, looking to turn the corner. Absolutely, and they go up against Delaware State this Friday, October 15th. So once again, these conference games are going to be very, very important for these Morgan State teams as they start to wind down the season to try and turn it around, build some momentum, and hopefully look back on a season that they're proud of. We'll talk volleyball, we'll talk football, we'll also talk bowling. They will kick off their season this coming weekend. We'll have all that and more on this edition of The Morgan Show. Welcome back to The Morgan Show. I'm Tariq Turner, and I am now joined by Morgan head football coach Tyrone Wheatley, whose team lost 27-0 last Friday against Howard. How's it going, coach? It's going well. It's going well. Um, so in that game on Friday, you guys only trailed by three at halftime. Where do you think things went wrong in the second half? Well, I don't think really things went wrong in the second half. It was just a combination of things that led up going into the second half. Uh, we had a penalty. Penalties was really the, the, the issue, which took away a touchdown, took away a uh, drive, um, missed opportunity, uh, pass going into, that would have led to a touchdown. Um, I just think right now the guys were just trying to do a little bit too much, got caught up in the hype of the game, and instead of just doing a simple block, you know, end up getting called for a hold, and that's what happened. How would you assess the spirit of the team right now? Spirit of the team is high. I mean, they're still going. I mean, we, you, I guess, you, you know, the question is spirit of the team by our record, but that's where the process and the growth of this team is going, right? So then when you talk about the culture, you got to build the culture, and the culture will, you know, lead them to the way. The spirits are still high. The spirit is still going. I know the record isn't what you would like for it to be, but what are some improvements you've seen from the team so far this season? Well, let's stay with the, the spirit, right? Let's stay with the spirit. Um, I was always taught, you know, and a great hurdle coach told me, track coach, who was a hurdler coach, uh, told me this, you know, process over outcome, right? The guys are starting to really truly understand and believe where they are and the things are where the, what's going to happen, what's going on. And right now, the thing that I'm most happy about as to when I first got here, the culture, right? Um, guys are still buying in, guys are still helping one another, and they're starting to understand that this really, at the end of the day, they are the playbook. They are the ones who play, right? I can coach all I can, but they are the ones who will go out there and really, really put the thing out there and learn it and go. And so where they're falling short, or whether they're messing up or whether they're not quote unquote executing is, it's just them trying to understand, I don't have to do a lot. I just have to do exactly what I need to do and that's it. On last week's episode, you said there were some things you could have done for the football program that would have given short, um, short term success. What are some of those things? Well, you know, not to get too specific into it, but um, you know, when you talk about every coach quote unquote would need his his tenure to be where his system, his guys. Um, I was in a situation where I wasn't able to get my system or my guys in. Um, I could have came in and just really clean house right away. Uh, but Morgan itself wasn't in a position for me to do that. But you work through it. Um, and I'm doing the best I can through that. But that was some of the things I could have done. The next thing could have been short-term success is 
going right away and getting a bunch of transfers, right? Everybody seems to say, well, you could get transfers, go get transfers, go get transfers. Well, we talk about the process, right? Well, that process is very short-lived because now all of a sudden you get the transfers, and if you don't have your base and your foundation set, they graduate, then what's, what's left? There's nothing there. So, yeah, you could have went and did a quick fix and got a bunch of transfers, brought them in, and then they graduate. But now who's at the bottom? So now you're steady building transfers year after year after year. And I'm going to just tell you this. I've been doing this long enough, and you don't sustain programs by doing that. You'll get one or two good years out of it, but then you're up and down. I don't want to be an up and down team. Were there any players that stood out to you in a positive manner against Howard? Yes. Um, I, I tell you, the defense, I, I would give the defense as a whole. They really stood out. But uh, Christian Teague on the defense, defensive lineman, uh, Javion Warden really played a heck of a game. He did a really good job. Offensively, I would say um, number 36, Afonso Graham, he stood out. I mean, he showed what he can really do. Number five, Jabril Johnson's playing really well. And our offensive line is starting to gel. They're growing up. They're starting to grow up. They're starting to get real physical. But um, I would just say right there, those are the guys right now that would be key, key guys I would point to. Um, what are some ways that you guys can put more points on the board? Not kill ourselves. You know, not – not take it away. You have three drops, I think four, right? You have four drops who, where you start to move the ball and you can move the ball, you have those four drops. So those are four drives that you kill that p p potentially put points on the board. We talk about the penalty on Alfonso Graham's long run. You can bring that one back, right? And then you talk about where we pick up a first down, but we get a holding call, which backs us up. And then we, I think we get another penalty, which now we're like second and 25. So those are the things where you start saying putting points on the board. You got to stop killing his drive in order to put points on the board. We have shown we can drive the ball. But once again, our guys get to the point where, and this once again, it comes back to me coaching it, coaching them through it, and it's just maturity, coaching them through it. When you get in the red zone, I don't need you to think about the outcome because you're trying to think about the touchdown before you think about the actual process of getting there. And our guys kind of get to the point where they just, they get anxious, they get overzealous, and they forget the little things. And I think that's what's happening to us right now. How would you evaluate Neil's performance on Friday? Neil's performance, I would say, is steady. Uh, once, as a quarterback, if you get hit a few times, um, and then he starts getting to that point where I got to press, I got to make things happen, that's what, that's what people are seeing right now. Um, but I would say Neil's performance is steady. Next on the schedule is South Carolina State. What are some keys to earning the first one of the season? Well, they're a stingy defense. Let's start there first. Let's start on defense. They do a really good job of keeping things up in front and, and getting to the ball. Very athletic on the defensive line. They really get after it. So once again, we can't go in and kill ourselves uh, because they're a very opp opportunistic team. Going offensively, they, even though they struggled a little bit against um, Pham, but that quarterback, their quarterback is really good, really good. And he has some receivers that can really get up and down the field. Uh, but the success for us is, is to go out continue to play our game because we've shown we can move the ball, we can put, put points up if we don't hurt ourselves and we don't stall our drives and take advantage of defense. Thank you for the time, Coach. Oh, no, thank you. I'm Tariq Turner. Stay tuned for more on The Morgan Show. show Lamont and Gabriel back at you and it will not be long before another Morgan State University program will be getting their season jump started. Bowling is right around the corner and we have invited to the Morgan show a gentleman who knows just a little something <laughs> about Morgan State bowling. He is the head coach of Morgan bowling. He is Tom Falbo. Coach welcome to the show. Lamont it's a pleasure always. Let's start right there, Coach. It's about to get started. How does that feel for you, your team, when after all of the off-season preparations, it is time to get down to the nitty-gritty? From day one, I've loved competing with the Morgan ladies, working with them at all times. This group is special. Um, 
I've been behind good over the years with some very, very good teams, incredible players. There's something special about this group that over time, and it could be a very short period of time, mm-hmm. is going to show itself. And I couldn't be more excited about their, their uh, season coming up. Let's back up just a minute, Coach. Right. What brought Tom Falvo to Morgan State <laughs> University? Um, God's blessings. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing uh, was I was at St. Francis University for eight years. Mm-hmm. And during that time, uh, we amassed a record that w- was pretty good, especially when it meant something in March. Uh, we accumulated two NEC championships. Mm-hmm. We made it to the final rounds uh, four out of the last uh, championship match, I should say, four out of the last six years I was there. So we were always in the hunt. Um, the two teams that won were outstanding. They, they, were, they were really, really good teams. Uh, the team in 27, 2018 was actually young and they were only gonna get better. Um, the situation had itself that we, um, we had to leave St. Francis due to personal reasons. Mm. And so I was out of coaching for a year. And the Morgan job came up. I, I knew about Coach Burke. I knew him personally and things like that. And so when it came up, I thought, I'm, I'm going to try this because uh, my daughter lives in Baltimore. But also there, there was a connection I had with Morgan through, through Coach Burke that um, was, it was a positive one. And so the more Morgan State talked with me and I talked with them, the match became uh, very mutual. And Mm -hmm. uh, from that point in time, it's, it's been, it's been great ever since. Fantastic. So you're kicking off the season in this upcoming week. You guys are making a long trip out to Youngstown, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So what is your experience with this Motif Penguin Classic, if any at all, and how excited are you guys to be able to go out, travel as a team, and and spread the good word of Morgan Bowling across the country? It's probably the best event we could start out with. You know, there's different philosophies on how to start a season, Mm -hmm. but right away we're playing a team that was in the national championship last year and made the Final Four. Arkansas State is coming to that event. They were second ranked in the nation last year. They made it to the national championship and they went on TV as in the championship match as the final two teams remaining. Mm -hmm. So right away we're going to have a a litmus test. And if our ladies that are at their best, I believe they're ready. Mm -hmm. Um, If if things uh, need to develop, they will. Mm -hmm. But if things uh, go the way we hope or plan, uh, it could be a very special weekend right away for Morgan State. Uh, there's a good mix of teams there. So there's teams that are very, very competitive, who I've mentioned, and there's teams that uh, have uh, various levels of skill and, and accomplishment. So for us, I think it's a great event to get us started, to show our, our strengths, to recognize our weaknesses so we can work on them, but then we're going to be able to move forward, um, I think, with a lot of energy either way and we hope it's on the, on the good side. Awesome, so I, I wanna piggyback off that question real quick. And I'm, I'm very curious, what specifics have you guys been working on uh, with the team in Baltimore that you're hoping is going to translate over to Ohio? Yeah, um, in bowling, there's oil patterns that tell you, they imply, mm-hmm. they don't tell you, but they imply of where to play a lane. So uh, in, in advanced bowling, you can't just play one part of the lane you have to play where you're laying the ball near the gutter. You have to play where you're laying the ball near the second arrow, 10 boards in. And towards the end of the day, or even on certain patterns, you have to play the ball between 15 and 20 where the, the, the arrows are. So mm-hmm. you, you have to cover a, a lot of, of ground. You have to be versatile. Mm-hmm. And so we worked on our versatility right away. We've been working on our mental uh, uh, toughness through that. There's certain drills that I do that, that help uh, try to train their mental toughness. I've been working with uh, each bowler one-on-one in their swings. Um, they're all very, very good, and, and if you're an advanced bowler like they are, um, there's still one or two things that you can, maybe more, <laughs> that you can pick out of a, of a young lady's swing to make it more efficient. And we've done that. Mm-hmm. And uh, these ladies have responded to everything that we've asked them to do. Um, their spare games are excellent, so I haven't over-drilled spares. Mm-hmm. We shoot them every day. We shoot them all the time. So we drill them actually in the most natural way that we, we do it when we're bowling. Mm-hmm. You know, throw 10, 10 pins in a row, that's great, but that's not how you bowl. So the fact that they've shown me such proficiency during the practice, um, 
they're shooting enough spares. So I mean, between the versatility, the spare shooting, the mental toughness, and uh, and some other things that we're working on, we're working on power. I mean, this is a high power team in terms of the type of uh, balls, bowling balls that we throw. Um, incredible rev rate, incredible uh, uh, pin action, that type of thing. So we're always working on our power every day. Mm -hmm. so exciting stuff, yeah. really exciting stuff. No bowling alley on campus, Coach. So Let's if people want to be able <laughs> to see this, for themselves, are there going to be opportunities in the area to do so? Uh, Lamont, that's a great question because yes, uh, in November, we're going to be at Woodlawn Lanes, AMF Woodlawn, two weeks in a row. There's a big local tournament going on, so the centers had to uh, agree on where things were going to be. And for the two weeks uh, in November, on November 13th and 14th, and on November 20th and 21st, Morgan State will be competing at Woodlawn Lanes in MEAC, number one. Looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be uh, uh, competing in the Coppin State Lady Eagle uh, Invitational on the 20th and 21st. How important are fans, crowd support <laughs> for bowlers? Do they get into it? Or are they just concentrating on the business at hand? Do fans elevate and help the bowler? They, they do. There's a connection uh, with our families, with our Morgan family, uh, who, who come to support us when we're at home, uh, that gives us the energy, that gives us the support, that gives us um, a, a lot of a lot of the intangibles that that you can't have when you're out there on your own. So uh, our families travel very very well to our events, even when they're far away or not you know not at home, and and so we're always at a little bit of an advantage of that support, and uh, we like that, and uh, can't wait at Youngstown. You know, there's going to be a, a number of our families there, and. Uh, uh, we embrace them, we love them, and, and they are a, 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 a part of our, our connection, part of the electricity which we all generate at that time. Mm -hmm. So, as any coach will tell you, coaching is one of the greatest privileges <laughs> in the world. At least coaches love to say that, and I, I think that getting the opportunity to guide young athletes through their journey as both people and as competitors is, is something that I really envy. So, what has working with this group of women meant to you leading into this preseason and technically speaking what have you seen in this preseason on the lanes that gives you inspiration for the upcoming uh for the upcoming year yeah the the team chemistry is vital mm -hmm. you know so when i'm on the recruiting trail you know i'm looking for uh the type of player uh, and the type of person mm -hmm. and the type of student and the type of relationship they have with themselves with our sport and with their parents if there's negativity there or, or some animosity there or just high emotion that, that is not going to lead to a successful day, that's hard to bring into a team of, of strangers, mm -hmm. really, you know. And so the chemistry developed right away and early on and even a little before heading in. And the team has grown that way. You know, every team has a little bit of growing pains, but I know each of these ladies, I know their hearts, and, and knowing them individually as they warmed to each other, grew with each other, uh, I would say, and, and have, have worked through admitted, admitted issues which aren't, aren't really, really bad, but I mean, they've worked through them and they're in a very good place right now. Mm -hmm. And I knew they would be. Um, two parts to the answer. Coaching is a privilege and it's a blessing. And you have an opportunity to say something to a young person that could change their life every single day you have that opportunity you never know what you're gonna face when they come to you in terms of their personal problems or family problems or um, relationship problems whatever but sometimes they can get very serious and so that type of relationship and, and trust that I've built within each of my players from St. Francis but especially here at Morgan um, has been has been very very important to I believe our growth as, as a team, as a new coach, not so new anymore, I'm mm -hmm. in my third year, but as a new team with their new coach. You know, we have uh, four new players from January. Uh, and so we're, we've, we've established a very good trust level. What I've seen on the lanes is some of the best practice preseason that I've experienced. It's wow. the best preseason I've experienced. Wow. Uh, in terms of scoring, we're gonna have a young lady up here in Italia that is uh, among our leaders in scoring. But that doesn't mean that other ladies are taking a back seat to Natalia. They're working hard, and they all have that potential, and they've all shown it. And we have a, a 
three or four players that are just scoring consistently no matter what we're putting down and we're putting down true sport shots there's no remnants of a house pattern on what we bowl on mm -hmm. um, they're doing very very well and so I'm, I'm excited about that because it usually translates I try to make practice a little harder than when we compete mm -hmm. and so when we get out there and compete hopefully the rhythm and and the pacing is going to help their scoring even more it awesome. usually does and with this group, no matter when, it, it could be and it should be this weekend, it will be. Mm -hmm. But if it, if it happens later on down the line, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There's too much talent here. One awesome. final question, Coach. I'm going to take you uh, off the bowling alley and, and put you in the classroom. Uh, where you can brag a little bit about what the <laughs> ladies have been able to accomplish in the classroom because when I heard that distinction, it was very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. uh, not just a Morgan or a MEAC or a <laughs> regional distinction, but a national distinction academically? That is correct. Um, number one in the nation. Wow. The, um, the ladies uh, were 3.84 GPA uh, for the entire uh, academic year of 20, 20 and 21. And that stems from them. I mean, that is who they became. We set the culture early on with that. And we have such a support system in, in uh, our academic staff uh, who, who support us. Uh, and the athletic department with their own advisors, with my um, instinct to know when to back off for certain players or when to ask players, you know, hey, if you have too much tonight, you know, let's, let, let's make up this practice in an individual session. You know, we, we don't, um, if, if somebody has something going on, all they have to do is tell me. And I think that level of support that these ladies have gotten has allowed them to show what they are about in terms of the the classroom in their future. I couldn't be prouder. That's the coach, Tom <laughs> Falbo. A lot to be proud about, both in the classroom and in competition. Coach, we appreciate the visit. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. As Thanks the coach so indicated, when we come back, we're going to talk to one of his student athletes who we anticipate will be doing some fantastic things for Morgan State Bowling. All of that up next right here on The Morgan Show. back to the Morgan Show, Lamont and Gabe with you, and as you see, we got some company. We got some company all the way from Bogota, Bogota, Colombia. She is a member of the Morgan State University bowling team. She is Natalia Miranda Vega. Welcome to the Morgan Show. Welcome to Morgan. Welcome to America. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Natalia, let's start right there. The decision to come from Bogota to Baltimore. And how's that transition gone for you? It was hard because I was already uh, studying on a university, but I was like unhappy. So mm. I decided to pursue my passions. So my passion for bowling, my passion to reach the best version of myself and enjoy the process. So I stopped studying there and applied to a, a bowling program that with NCAA, I know I could uh, get a scholarship and came here and learn a lot and so far it's been amazing. Like the support you feel like you know there's people there wishing you to do your best. And it's pretty easy to work hard when you have that kind of support. And that's something that helps me day to day to work harder, harder, harder. And we're gonna achieve some good stuff. That's a big transition, Natalia, but you say it's gone well for you. Have there been challenges? Do you get a little homesick every once in a while? Yeah, sometimes, because it's also like a different culture. So mm -hmm. I'm used to go walk into the store or that kind of stuff. And that's something that you cannot do here. Mm -hmm. Or uh, on, once on weekends, I go with my bike and take a ride, but that's something. But you find other stuff also that you enjoy and people here are just kind. And I, I like it so far. It's different, but it's good. Mm -hmm. So 
as you made the journey from Bogota up to Morgan State, did you do this alone or did any family come with you up here or have you been totally by yourself? No, I did it alone. Wow, wow. Yeah. And and how was that was that especially difficult to do this totally on your own in the pursuit of your passions or were you ready for it? Did you attack it head on? It's funny cuz I like felt in myself that I was ready for it. Mhm. Mm so I when I first came uh, when I say bye to my family, I was sad and, and everything, but I was so excited to leave. Mm -hmm. But so I, I didn't want to say like, oh, I want to go now. Yeah, no, I yeah, couldn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like uh, happy because I was leaving and they were so happy for me because they knew that it's uh, a passion that I'm pursuing. Mm -hmm. So they were happy, we were sad that we won't see each other any, uh, like that much. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of FaceTiming, uh, we're always chatting. Uh, mm -hmm. so. I kind of was ready, yeah. you know, like universe-wise, mm -hmm. I was supposed to be here. So mm -hmm. inside of me, I was feeling like, okay, you, you got this, no worries, you got your support. And also like talking to coach uh, constantly, it told me to mm -hmm. like to be here. So I'll go to a, f a place that I don't know, but I know there's someone waiting for me uh, and he would help me. Have any of your family members been able to come up and watch you bowl here in America yet or now? No. Really? No, yes. Uh -huh. They've seen me like in Facebook Live uh -huh. during yeah. competition or ah, sometimes okay. at practice. Uh -huh. But that's awesome. That's what we've done so, far. so you've been very successful in your young career so far. You've represented Colombia on the national stage. You've won multiple youth gold medals, you know, throughout your journey, and now you've come here. So when you see the team that you have at Morgan. How do you feel about the talent on the team? Do you think that this is a team that can do special things as you move forward through the season? Do you think that there's a lot of good players on the team right now? Yeah, for sure. I think we have a lot of potential mm -hmm. and that we are kind of different in some aspects, but that's what makes us like better because mm -hmm. we are learning from each other every single time, every single practice. And you don't learn just from one teammate, you learn from everyone. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of potential. I'm so excited that's for the awesome. season. Natalia, take me back to your earliest memory of picking up a bowling ball, falling in love with the sport, and realizing that you were pretty good at it. Uh, walk me through <laughs> that journey. Well, I got into bowling because of my family. And actually, when my mom was pregnant, she bowled a little bit with me. <laughs> so maybe it started there. But what I can remember, because I can remember that, what I can remember is that I used to go to the bowling alley with them. And sometimes in competitions, there were like some top Colombian players, um, Rocio Restrepo, Clara Juliana, Maria Jose, Angie Rodriguez. And I saw the passion that they were feeling for the sport. And that was, that hit different for me. And I was like, I want to feel that. I, they're enjoying it so much that I want to be there. So let's try it. And when I went, like when I was nine years old, I went to the uh, school, to the bowling school. And they told me like, oh no, you're you're too little. Let's wait one more year, and then you you could come here and start preparing. Mm -hmm. And I was so sad, but I'm glad that I still had like the passion, even if I hadn't started to go again next uh, the next year. And then I started, and since then everything just started developing more passion, more passion. And sometimes you struggle with your confidence, but you also know that there's more there for you. So work for it, because you, you deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, on game day, Natalia, do you know the moment you get out of bed that morning that this is going to be a good day? Do you feel it when you're warming up prior to a match? Do you get a sense of whether or not you're going to be at the top of your game or not before you actually begin competing? Yeah, sometimes. And it's difficult, because sometimes you're feeling like, I'm feeling something strange. But, <laughs> yeah. but like you need to develop your ability to set your mind in that it's a good day you got it so i do some routines after competition uh, before after and during to lead me to that spot where you are like it's going to be a good day you got it mm -hmm. so let's do it so you have a very big trip coming up with your team you're going all the way out to ohio and there's going to be as your coach said after we just interviewed him some very good teams are going to be there how important would a good start at this Youngstown, Ohio tournament mean for both you personally and for the team as a whole? How important is this going to be for you guys? Okay. I think that with the new recruitments and that we are such a strong team now compared to what we had before, because now we're more like solid, mm -hmm. I think that's just a good start. So just getting there, we're going to learn a lot. And I think that 
the best thing that we can do on the first match is just be ourselves mm -hmm. and be able like to just enjoy the moment because mm -hmm. you're not gonna win if you're like thinking I gotta win I gotta win you just gotta do you because mm -hmm. we're good and that's all that we need so I think we're gonna learn a lot I'm not excited for that awesome stuff really great stuff what's your career high any 300 games from the time no I did 298 Two. oh so yeah. close so close I needed for uh, 300, you need 12 tracks. Mm -hmm. I get to 11 and then 8. Oh, <laughs> heartbreaking. Well, maybe you'll get one this week and we'll be rooting I for hope. you. I really hope. It's coming. It's coming. Natalia Miranda Vega, we appreciate the visit. Good luck Thank this weekend you. in Ohio. Thank you. It was so fun to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. That's the Morgan State University Bowler going to be doing some special things. We do believe they get their season jump started this weekend. Gabe and I will be back to wrap this thing up. You are watching The Morgan Show. As we wrap up another edition of the Morgan Show, Lamont and Gabriel with you. As we look forward for Morgan State, Morgan State football team going to be on the road this weekend. Tough assignment for the Orange and the Blue. Uh, they'll be down in Orangeburg, South Carolina, taking on the Bulldogs, a team picked to win it all in the MEAC. It'll be homecoming on the South Carolina State campus. But the Bears got to find a win somewhere. Uh, they'll look to see if they can get one in South Carolina this weekend. As for the volleyball team, they will be at home this weekend. A Friday evening encounter on the home hardwood. The Lady Bears will be taking on the Delaware State Hornets. Crucial for the Lady Bears, Gabriel, to try to get one in the win column on Friday evening. Absolutely, absolutely it is. And as you heard from our guests earlier today, you can catch the Lady Bears bowling team in Youngstown, Ohio for the Motif Penguin Classic. Be sure to follow at Morgan State Bears on Twitter and Instagram for updates of how the Lady Bears fare in Ohio and how all of our Morgan teams do across the board. We'll give you a deep dive into how bowling did, how football did, how volleyball did. You can get it right here. You can get it right here on The Morgan Show. We're going to close, but I want to thank Gabriel. Fantastic job. Thank you so much. Kayla Sweezy, we appreciate it. I just really appreciate you guys having me on here. And honestly, I can't wait to be back on the desk with you, Kayla, and everybody else that's part of our awesome team here at the Morgan Sports Show. We'll be right here waiting for you. I'm Lamont for Gabriel. This is The Morgan Show.